Thanks, Mr. Gulati, and good evening to all the honored guests present over here. Uh, I was supposed to present in the first session, and now it's the last session and the last uh, presentation of today's. Uh, so while, you know, I, somehow I feel it, it was good, because when we went through all the presentations which were presented today, uh, we talked about almost all aspects of business. We talked about where India stands, what needs to be done, where are the gaps, and India and people really acknowledged also that India can take a deserved position. It, it has to work around things and it can take a deserved position. And after China, it's, and it's not in this conference. In, I have attended so many conferences. People have come from worldwide. They are buyers, they are manufacturers, and they are looking forward to India to do something. While uh, this presentation, we did a report uh, a month back and with our partners from US, UK, Turkey, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. So all, our, all of us, we sat together and they worked, they gave their trends, what's happening globally, and we came out with this report of uh, Road to 2025, Market, Trade, and Investment Trends. So these trends are global trends. So when we talk about what India can do and what needs to be done, in this, we need to have a roadmap clear in terms of where we need to go. Is the market good enough for us to expand? Is this right industry to work? Keeping all these questions in mind, we have worked on this report and I'll take you through while uh, this report was released a month before, a lot of people might have read it, but I would just try to deliberate in little more detail in terms of uh, the synopsis of what went behind it, how numbers were structured, how all detailing was done to come out for this presentation. So this presentation has uh, three parts. One is introduction, trends, and then implication of these trends for India. So when we talk about, see, uh, today at this moment when I talk about road to 2025 and we say that market is growing, people say, no, I think the overall, while India is gaining because of dollar and rupee situation, but again, the global market is not doing so good. So people, when the markets are down, people are themselves down. They are not thinking of big investments and all. But I would say that Today, we are a $700 billion industry, and while we, are, we were growing through this path, we had this slowdowns, 2008 financial crisis, uh, Europe's sovereign debt crisis, slowing down of key global economy. So all of that happened, but still we are a $700 billion uh, size, market trade size, and we are still growing. So whatever is happening today will also pass, and when we are talking about 2025, this, we are talking about road to growth. And uh, we talked about in 2005 how things will grow. And again, uh, going forward, I think Asian countries exporting to developed markets by the end of first decade, China, India, like these, this is also being talked about how China, India will be major market. But when we talked about two, 2025, I think we are talking about a change world, a change business, the way we do business today, while what Mike also talked about, a lot of technology will come up, a lot of changes will happen. But the way we are going to do business, it will change. So we have to be updating ourselves to the business changes as we are growing. So though we have to fulfill all our orders which we received today, we have to produce those orders, supply them in time, all of these things will happen. But at the same, same time, as a management, we always have to ke keep global trends in mind because it's not business for today only. We are developing business for future also. So these things have to be kept in mind while we are growing in this industry. So I would, in, the, I, in this slide, we would, I would only say that it's not going to be the sector that we know as of now. It's going to be a change sector. So first trend, global market will cross $2 trillion size. So while I said all our partners, global partners work with us, so that's why it was important to get a real right size of markets in globally. And if you see in this, uh, we have uh, US, which is $225 billion. We are talking about domestic market size of these countries uh, at MRP level. So we have European Union, which is $350 billion, Russia 37, China 150, India 40. So globally, if you see, it's a $1.1 trillion market size today. When we go forward, uh, we would say that uh, this $1.1 billion trillion will move to $2.2 trillion. We will see what the changes, where the changes are going to happen. While this is important to see, and all of us know we read everywhere, the developed countries 
they will keep on growing. They are a big size. They'll keep on growing by 1 to 2 percent. While the BRIC nations, again, from 5 to 8 percent. This is the average benchmark that we have to say. If this is going to change, there will be a change in per capita spend on apparel also. If you see the changes like what, what are the kind of changes which are expected from 2011 to 2025 in countries like US, EU, and then if you see countries like China, India, Brazil, Russia, the change is much more. So that change which will, though happening from a small base, will give a larger market. And if you see going forward, this is how it will look like. There can be, see, you can debate about it. There can be changes 10, 20 percent here and there. But does it really matter? If you see the larger picture, here we are saying China, which is 150 billion dollar market, domestic market will go to 550 billion dollar. And Europe, which is 350, is going to change but move to 420. And United States, 225 to 300. So overall, if you see, 1 trillion dollar market will move to 2 trillion dollar market. So why this is significant? This change, we are so saying that 1 trillion dollar worth of market, while there will be change because of uh, price change also, but overall, 1 trillion dollar market will change to 2 trillion dollar. That means an addition of 1, 1 trillion dollar global market. When we are talking about this addition, somebody has to supply to ensure that whatever this market changes are happening, this is, this is well supplied. But whether it will be India or some other country, it's for the country and the entrepreneurs of that country to decide. Because for that, it's not that it will, uh, it will be a normal growth. You have to create a lot of investment. You have to work through all which has been talked about since morning till now that how the changes are going to happen. So with this, I think uh, the kind of share changes which will happen till 2025 where we are saying China will be almost 27 percent, Europe 21, US 15, India 11. So with this change in arithmetic, I think we need to really focus as part of our strategy that going forward where to focus. While I am not saying that we will not focus to US Europe because they are presently the biggest market, but we have to have our strategy in place for future. Then combined size of Chinese and Indian apparel markets will become bigger than US and Europe. So while we may debate about the numbers, again I am saying it's a very broad trend and accepted worldwide that this is how it's going to change. From today, 150 billion dollar Chinese market and Indian 45 billion dollar market with a change in per capita income, it's going to change to, you see, uh, Chinese economy will be from 7 trillion dollar today will be 23 trillion dollar. So even if we say it's not 9 percent growth, it's 7, 8 percent growth. So how much it will change? 1, 2 trillion dollar here and there? So even if India, we say that, that no, it's not happening 8 percent now, it will be 5 percent, 4 and a half percent, 6 percent. But if as things stabilize, it might go to an average of 6, 7 percent, not even 8, 9 percent. But this 4.8 trillion dollar will be 4 trillion dollar. Today we are sitting at 1.7 trillion dollar. So we are talking about an additional two trillion dollar coming in economy. So I think one we, once one see these numbers, these are the fact for which we have to be prepared as a business. And who is going to do it? Are international players coming to India will do it? No, it, it has not happened in China and it will not happen in India. It's the Indian brand and in China the Chinese brand who are growing. So while there will be international brands which will keep the fashion in perspective, there are brands which will give an inspirational value to it, they will create new things so that others can follow, but ultimately it's the local brand worldwide who have done it and it will be done in China and India. China, you will see all, already there are brands which are one billion dollar plus and in India there are brands which are thousand crore plus. So these brands are leading and these brands are growing very fast. So I would say that these domestic brands in India will play an important role in the way things are changing, not only in India, in China. Why I'm talking about India, China? Because as we already talked about, the India, China together will be larger than US and Europe together. So changing consumer preferences, how it is happening, Chinese consumer. Survey reveals that consumers are more capable and have started moving beyond need-driven purchase. As you have seen, today, you know, the change is happening so fast, today, China has already overtaken Japan, it's 7 trillion dollar economy, US is what, 14 trillion. So you say China is almost 50% 50, 50 of US economy size. So it's a big number we are talking about. 
and this big number is delivered by their domestic brand and when you have this big number the people have the buying power and those same people are going to be there and they will buy different products their needs are changing and they are driven by those purchases again i was talking to uh, the professor from uh, chinese university and they were saying that uh, if we say that 10% of chinese population which is 140 million they are the people who have as good buying power as anywhere in us and europe and they are all looking for products which are which are luxury products which give them a different feel so i think with this coming same is coming in india also indian consumer is shifting to organized retailers and looking for brands while definitely there will be a shift which is happening from a uh, base level to a mid level to a high level but again this shift is directly happening and this change we can see because the kind of organized setup organized retail setup which is coming in india and all of you will agree because you people are all seeing this change happening here again these numbers just to put them in perspective india and china today is 195 billion dollar domestic market size us and europe 575 billion so it's almost three times and that's why we are all focusing towards that those markets but 2025 we are saying india and china total will be 740 us and europe will be 725 so do does it make us think that we need to look our business from a different perspective altogether china chinese increased focus on domestic supplies will create a global trade gap of us dollar 100 billion i tell you like for this we really researched that the way things are changing and uh, the the peop, uh, one professor who was here and i because i want to validate whatever i am saying so i was talking to this person today morning and uh, david who is here and uh, he was saying that definitely this changes are happening and the way domestic market of china is growing people want to supply more and more to domestic market and export is taking a back seat when i am saying export is taking a back seat so i will talk about the numbers here so today in garment exports china has 41 41% market share so when we say it's taking an export is taking a back seat does not mean 41% is going to be 20% 41% as you see the numbers here will grow go to uh, i'll come here and then i'll go back so this is how the numbers are going to change from 700 almost 700 billion dollars to 1700 billion dollar will be the market size by 2025 out of which if we say chinese with this growth level of 7% growth uh, reaches to 600 billion dollars so the market share will move from 41% to 35% so this 100 billion dollar market we are talking about it's mere 6% change so its change is not that chinese will not be making or chinese today also 75% 70% of machinery shipments are going to china in today's environment also we have tracked complete machinery shipments and 70 75% is still going to china so it's why then this 41% should go to 45% no their shift is happening to supply to domestic market which is growing tremendously so with this change from 41% to 35% market share this global trade 100 billion dollar will be available to all players in market and india will play a major role that's what the whole industry thinks that's what the global industry thinks i think uh, while we have debated since morning that uh, there are gaps we are seventh among seven players so while we were talking and we were discussing on this so seventh among seven players so we were seven 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 everywhere but still we are exporting uh, 14 billion dollar worth of garments out of in india so that means the entrepreneurs are there we have who have taken it from base to 14 billion dollar and definitely the only thing we are saying when we are changing we are planning to change the orbit from 14 billion dollars to 30 billion dollars 40 billion dollars we have to think differently we have to work differently we have to see from hr perspective from implementation perspective from manufacturing perspective but there is a scope which is there and we have to focus on that and grow from here and the same entrepreneurs as well as new entrepreneurs coming into this business will change this intra asia trade will double to us 350 billion dollar 
So today, how much is the trade? Today we are already talking about 180 billion dollar trade. And I tell you, when this 180 billion dollar trade, how it is structured, uh, I will again come back. Uh, this slide, yes. So 180 billion dollar, 34 billion dollar others, but in China and Hong Kong is 118 billion dollar. So definitely China and Hong Kong trade, which again is, you know, how it's manufacturing driven, but uh, is 118 billion dollar trade there. This 350 billion dollar, 200 billion dollar China, 40 billion dollar India, and 110 billion dollar others. So when we are talking about this change, how, why and how it is coming, and we can see that how much, how many FTAs are being signed between uh, India and others, and within these Asian countries, and with Far East Asian countries, with Japan also coming into picture, India has already signed an agreement last year, 2011 in August, not last year, 2012 August, sorry, uh, where the, it's a free trade between India and Japan. So with these trade changes, with their shift, where there is a proximity between two countries, between businesses, people traveling to each other, and then developing business, investment happening between countries. Today, a lot of investment is happening in China, Taiwan, Indonesia, uh, and uh, Bangladesh. While we traveled, we had road shows three weeks back in Korea and Taiwan, and um, I can tell you there was a lot of enthusiasm. While more enthusiasm was towards fabric, as well as sportswear, synthetic uh, garments, where uh, Korean and Taiwanese investors were ready to explore India. They were ready to explore to come to India to invest in fabric business as well as sportswear garment business. So when those investments will happen, these investments bring trade changes also. So this is how overall scenario changes in this business. And the last trend that we, I'll be talking about is uh, global textile and apparel manufacturing value chain will attract investment worth $350 billion. So this is the investment which is going to happen in next 12 years. How much will happen in India, how much will happen elsewhere is what we have to decide. But to cater to this additional $1 trillion market, this $350 billion US dollar investment is going to happen in next 12 years. And uh, while the investment attracted, if you see, in 2011, I would say that if you see in this slide, spindles, China 59%, rotors 68%, again uh, circular knit 73%, flat knit 78%. So major, even shuttleless looms 84%, water jet looms 94%. So Chinese are still taking away maximum investment. So while if you really need to grow garment industry, there need to be a lot of investments in weaving sector, the fabric sector in India. So. This has been understood whether some initiatives have been taken as part of policy initiative or some initiatives have to be taken by entrepreneurs to really invest in this sector in a big way, maybe on their own, in partnership with others, but a lot of investment need to be then done here. So uh, we have done the basic calculations in terms of if we see this $350 billion, how this $350 billion will be divided. Uh, garment manufacturing, $165 billion. Fabric, $100 billion, yarn manufacturing, $35 billion. While we are talking about 40% capacity addition and 60% replacement and upgradation. So this is how the overall $1 trillion which will be added, the investment will be linked in this manner. Now, uh, the last slide I would like to talk about is what are the implications of these trends for India? So when we are talking about domestic market growing from $45 billion to $200 billion, it brings a host of opportunities for domestic market in textiles, apparel, and retail business. There'll be investment. See, it will be driven by front end. In front end, the retail business, whether international retailers coming, whether the brands growing, consumer wanting to buy more and more because they have disposable income. Now it is for the manufacturers to decide and focus that how much they can supply to this growing market. Can they partner with the brands at this stage? It's a it's a difficult task because as exporters, we have developed manufacturing businesses where we are used to doing those big quantities where things are very organized, payments are done in time. When you go to domestic market, there are a lot of issues which get evolved. But once you get evolved as part of this business process, I can assure you that the way this market is growing, uh, there are a lot, lot of business in domestic market in times to come. 
Indian industry can capitalize on expected slowdown of Chinese export growth. And all our exporter friends, like all people who are sitting over here, they are themselves seeing. Buyers are coming again and again. They want them to put up more capacities. They want them to supply more and more. But again, there are issues, issues and issues which need to be sorted out. But I, I think you as manufacturers, we as people who are connected globally with those buyers as well as the manufacturers globally, we have no doubt that people are looking forward that if in India we can set up efficient supply chain, set up efficient factories, people are looking to buy more and more from India. Then work towards building Asian countries as their export market. Again, not easy markets, but this Asian market, we have to focus the way trade is growing. I think while parallel, we might be focusing as of now some companies 100% to US and Europe, but going forward, growing from 10% of that share to 20%, 30%, we have to focus, we have to be part of whatever is happening in Asian part of continent and be part of that to see that how we can make our inroads and grow our market from that perspective. Last, India will emerge as an attractive investment des destination for domestic entrepreneurs as well as international investors. And I can tell you like uh, I have been working with a lot of international investors. While India in textile and apple industry the investment has been uh, minimal till now, international investment. But there are players, see, we always look towards Bangladesh, Vietnam, they are more efficient, they are more competitive than us. I think for in country like India, we have to look towards country like Turkey. We have been to Turkey, we have done a lot of projects, few investments have come recently from Turkey, both in fabric as well as garment industry. And the owners of those companies, they have traveled across to China, to Vietnam, Indonesia, and finally they have invested in India. Not that, that they have decided initially that we have to come to India, but they said that the kind of business that we are in, the kind of fashion business we are in, the kind of connect with the people of the country, it's only possible in India. And that was one of the major force which, which helped them decide that they have to finally invest in India. Maybe the infrastructure was an issue. There were a lot of issues which were there, but and all of those businesses who have invested as of now, we have been involved. There were two of them in from Turkey. They're all doing good. So from that perspective, if you see, we have to think not from only from cost competitiveness. We have to think that how it has been advised by David earlier also, which has been spoken by other player also, that we have to use our strength. We have to use our strength in understanding between the designers internationally, between the designers here, of our growing market and see that how we can grow our business in quality competitiveness, in terms of uh, fashion competitiveness and grow the Turkey way instead of always talking about, I think uh, I have traveled across, I think for India, while I am not saying Turkey is a small country, so they are doing $20 billion worth of export. India has much more bigger role to play, but that can be the engine for growth. Rest, we need to set up those big factories also, which can compete with Chinese and Vietnam factories also. With this, I would say these trends have a lot of implications for India. They are global trends, and I think we'll take a lot of inspiration from uh, what we have seen throughout the day. And I would just like to, I think, I don't know, uh, Gunish, you were sitting in Rina's presentation before this, and while we were discussing, and it was talked about that HR or people uh, are one of the biggest issues that why, why we are not investing in a big way. I think Reena answered some of those questions where she talked about that how you can go methodically to see that those HR issues are also addressed. With this, uh, thanks for listening to this presentation.